Hello again, Luis Reina here and in this short video I'm going to try to explain what is predictive analytics, what is machine learning. We could um, start by saying that um, machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. As you may know, artificial intelligence uh, is the science that tried that the computer acts like human beings and we can say that machine learning is one of the branches okay of artificial so it's part of artificial intelligence okay let me give you a better definition and let me do a little bit of history you know this guy with the black suit here this guy is Arthur Samuel and this picture is from 1959 and this is a guy working for IBM research and what he's doing in the picture, he's playing checkers and you may think, oh, this guy should be fired, he's playing checkers at work but not, because he was a guy that designed an artificial intelligence system that was able to play checkers, okay, against this machine, this IBM 701 okay, and this guy, Arthur Sam, was the one that coined the term machine learning that we use today and he coined the term as the ability of computers to learn without being explicitly programmed, okay? And this is the definition we usually give about machine learning. But the definition itself is not very good, I have to say, it doesn't tell us a lot. We understand this definition when we know what is machine learning, but before understanding what machine learning is, the definition maybe is kind of sounds like science fiction, what I mean that computers are able to learn without being programmed, okay? so. A much better way to understand what is machine learning is just an example, that's what I'm going to do. And even better uh, than an example is an example that has beers. Okay? So I'm going to use uh, this example, a problem to distinguish if a drink is wine or beer. Okay? Try, I'm going to try to explain what is machine learning with this example. Okay? And before getting machine learning, there's different ways to solve this. You know? we, we have to distinguish if a drink is wine or beer. We can do it manually or we can do it through programming so we have these two ways uh, to solve it let's see it the manual way okay so I get a beer I taste it okay and say it's beer okay look at it taste it's a beer then I get a wine look at it taste it and I say it's wine then I get another drink it's wine this time and I know it's wine okay and then I get a beer, and it's beer, and I so on, continue to taste drinks, okay? But then there is a time when you doubt, okay? Is this really beer? And then you get a wine, and you th think it's beer, okay? Ready? And then you get another wine, and you say, I'm sure this is this is beer. And then you get another wine, and you say, this is milk, okay? So as you see, this manual has some scalability issues, okay? So, not the best way. So, knowing that manually, let's see the programming way. How can we solve this problem through programming, okay? Uh, to do that, first I need to define the variables that define beverage, okay? So, which variables can define uh, drinks? For example, I don't know, the color, the color of the, of the drink, the degree of alcohol, okay, how much alcohol has, total acidity, Okay, this one I have to search in the internet, I didn't know what it is. But again, you can discover many variables that are able to define, and you are able to measure. It's important that there are variables that are uh, you are able to measure somehow, okay? So when you have these variables, you're going to measure results, real results. So you're going to buy some wine, you're going to buy some beers, and you're going to buy some devices that are able to measure these variables. So to measure the color, you use these device, I don't know even how to pronounce the name, is spectrophotometer, you buy a, a grid meter and you buy another device to measure the total acidity, okay? So you're going to open the wine, you're going to open the beer, you're going to start measuring these variables. And when you have measured this, you're going to build a table, okay, with these variables. So I'm going to have a table with the color, okay, and this is the uh, the color of the different drinks, the alcohol and the acidity. And the first line, the first observation is for the color 12, alcohol 12, and a CD 0.11, it is wine, okay? So this is uh, uh, something that is real, that is measured. So with this color, this alcohol, and this, I know it's wine. I go to the second one with 13, alcohol 6, and a CD 0.51, it's beer. 
So I have a table of good results because I have measured them and they are real results. Okay, so I have a table with variables. So again, knowing that manually is not the best way, but those scalability issues, I'm gonna see through programming. And even through programming, I have two ways. With a traditional, what I call traditional approach that I will explain in a minute, or through machine learning. Let's see the, the first one, the traditional approach. Okay, I'm gonna do a program here when I'm gonna code the intelligence based on rules. So I'm gonna use if then rules to code the intelligence in my program to decide if something is wine or beer. So for example, I could code a, a rule if I have a knowledge about wine or beers. If alcohol is bigger than 10% or total acidity is bigger than 0 0.87, then it is wine. So I can code this rule because I have a knowledge, I have the intelligence about the drinks. Or I can code more rules like alcohol is bigger than 3% and the color is whatever, then it's beer. So here I'm going to be able to code the rules, the intelligence in this program, okay, that decide if something is wine or beer with the if then rules okay but there is a better approach and this is machine learning okay and what is what does how do i uh get built okay a program that is able to decide if something's wine or beer with machine learning first i need that measure data did i measure that i know is good with the color the alcohol the acidity and i have the result here the wine or beer so i have data i have an algorithm machine learning algorithm that i don't code i use someone did for me Okay, this is libraries I can use, machine learning algorithm that I'm gonna use, okay? And this algorithm, when I give the data, so I give my measured data to the algorithm, it's gonna return me a function. A function that I can call function is wine or beer, that is gonna receive these parameters, the variables, in my case, color, alcohol, and acidity. And this function is the one I'm gonna use to determine if something is wine or beer. So when I have this function, because the machine learning algorithm, this one return it to me, I'm gonna give a new data, so I get, okay, and now I have alcohol 15, I have a CDD 0 0.32, and I have color 9, and I tell the function, tell me, what is this? And the function will tell me, this is wine, okay, this is wine, okay? So this is how it works, I give data to my algorithm, the algorithm returns a function. In reality, this function is what we call the model, the machine learning model, okay? The model that I'm gonna use to determine if something is wine or beer, okay? And giving data, to an algorithm, to this machine algorithm, to get the function, the output is the function, is what we call training. Training is getting good data, giving the good data to an algorithm, and obtaining the model, obtaining the function that later I'm gonna use to determine if something is wine or beer. And the action of giving new, new data, new value to my function to obtain if it's wine or beer is called scoring. Okay, scoring is this, using the function that the machine learning algorithm returns to me, okay? So this is how machine learning works, okay? Having good data given to an algorithm, obtaining a function or model, and then using that function to determine, okay? Let me put both programming approaches together so you, we understand the difference. In the traditional approach, I need to code a program. I need to code with the intelligence, with the knowledge of the business, in this case, the, the wine or beer, and I'm gonna give a new data, and it's gonna tell me that data based on the rules, if the rules is beer wine. But through machine learning, I first need to train my model that is obtaining the function, the model, and when I have the function, I can have new data to that model, and I have to, I can obtain the result data, okay? The difference, as you can see here, I need to be an expert in this matter, okay, because I need to code, I have need to put the intelligence in the program I code to get the data. In this case, I need to have good data. If I have good data, I give it to my machine learning algorithm, okay, I can get the function. I don't need, okay, I don't need to code uh, the algorithm because it's already done for me. This is why the definition now of Arthur Samuel makes sense now, the ability of computer to learn without being explicit programming. What it means that I don't need to code the intelligence. I can use my algorithm inside a program, inside, for example, a Python program, but I don't need to code the intelligence where if I don't use machine learning, I need to code here, I have to explicitly program the intelligence, the rules in the program. So here, uh, uh, that's why it was defined without having to 
program explicitly because reality the, the algorithm is made I just have to use the algorithm to obtain okay and that's and they learn because I give them data and they return the function and when I give better data I get a better function okay so this is uh, the the difference between a traditional approach and the machine learning that I hope now is a little bit more clear but doing machine learning is much more than getting the model Okay, because first I need to prepare the data. I need good data. Okay, without good data, uh, the model is going to have the function going to have is not good. So I need to have a very good data to prepare the data. I have to decide because I don't have more, one algorithm. I have many algorithms. Which one I should use? And there are many. Okay, so I choose choose the correct algorithm. Then I need to train the data. Train the data, as I said, is giving the data to generate the model, the functions, and then put it in production so people can use it. So I'm going to put that model in production so people can do start scoring of that data to do the prediction. And then I need to monitor, okay, because the quality of my model could go down for any many circumstances and I may need to train the model again. So this is a very iterative process to machine learning. It's not only getting the model but preparing the data and using algorithm and and then put in production to monitor. So you have to understand that machine learning has a lot of process and maybe the most of the time is not generating the model but for example preparing the data. Okay, something important. Okay, but as I said there are many algorithms and we can divide them, oh, sorry, we can divide them in two groups, in two categories, one called supervised and a second one called not supervised. In the supervised uh, algorithms I know the variable I want to predict, okay? So the case, the example I put about beers and, and wine, the, the variable I want to predict is wine or beer. It's a binary. So it could be wine or beer, only two values, okay? And um, this is the variable and it's called the label. Label is the variable that I want to predict, okay? I know which variable I want to predict. And the rest of the variables we call features, okay? That are characteristics that define the label. Okay, and there is many techniques here. I'm going to explain a minute some of them, like linear regression, logistic regression. There's so many techniques that are supervised because I know I establish the variable I want to predict. And they're not supervised. And some examples we could do that for that is to predict, for example, churn, telco company, or fraud or anything. The not supervised. There is no label. Okay, there is no label, so I don't have a variable to predict. Okay, I just want to understand the relationship between the data. Okay, without having a variable to predict. Uh, there is many techniques like clustering, like k-means, that I'm going to do some segmentation, for example, of my customers. So I don't want to predict a variable itself, but I want to segment my data. I will put an example uh, in a minute so you understand better. Let's show me a sample of supervised linear regression. Okay, imagine you want to predict the price of the car based on its power. Okay, so let me draw this. In a graphic, I have it here in the x axis the power, the horsepowers, and in the y axis I have the price in euros. So I can go to a dealer, I say what is the cost of this 70 horsepower car, and they can tell me it's 8,000 euros. Okay, good. And I go to another dealer, I say what is car of 300 horsepower, horsepower and the price is 130,000. Okay, this is data. There are observations, good or of my data. Then I want to predict what is the price of a 200 horsepower. Okay, and the model, the function is going to tell me this car, the price is 60,000. How does the model get to this price? I'm going to explain. How does enable my my machine learning is able to obtain this? Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get not only two observations, I'm going to go a lot of observations. So I go to many dealers and I get real data. So all these black dots are real data. I went to dealers and I asked for a power of these 280. What is the price? So I get real data. Uh, here I put it in my in my graphic. Okay, and the model that the algorithm is going to return is this line. This line is my function, my model that I'm going to use to predict. So the model is going to return that green line, and when I have to predict the price of a 200 horsepower, I go up to the line, go to the left, and I get the price. Okay. So the question now is, okay, this is the line, this is my model, the algorithm returned to me. How did the algorithm did that? Okay, let me explain you how it works a little bit. So the first the algorithm does is just draw a line, okay? Draw a line, this black line, and it's going to measure the error of this line. And the error of this line in this case is the distance from the line to the good data, to the to my observations, to my dots. So I'm going to measure the distance to every dot. I'm going to zoom all the distance to my dot, and that's going to be the error of my line, 
okay so I get error I don't know 300 then I'm gonna move the line and I'm gonna measure the error again in this case is bigger okay because I move down so I'm gonna move up until I get the minimum error when I when I get the minimum error that's my model so the green line is the one that represents the minimum error to real data to the dots that's um, a linear regression one okay so the green light is my model is my function that I'm gonna use to predict and I get it because I got the minimum error to the real data let me explain another example logistic regression algorithm uh, uh, that is also supervised okay imagine you want to predict if I must give a credit to a client okay so let me draw here the depths of a customer and the salary okay so I'm gonna draw all these guys that I draw in red because they are uh, customers with this salary if I go down and get the salary I go to the left I get the depths so all these dots are observations of my customers and they are in red because they did not return they did not return the credit okay and I got all these dots they are blue they are customers with a certain salary certain depths and these are blue because they did return the credit so this is good data customers that did return the data so the in this case the machine learning model is gonna be this line okay and this line is gonna divide the goods from the bad the one that did return and the one that did not return okay so the model is gonna return me this line and when I get a new customer a new client that comes to my office and if he's here the green one okay because he's in this side of the line say I'm gonna give the credit because he's um, in the in the place where the customer did return but if this other customer come to my office because with this salary okay this guy is with this salary and this debt okay I'm not gonna give the credit because he belongs to the group that uh, other customer did not return okay so how this how I predict I say I'm predicting this guy uh, is gonna return me the the credit so it's good I'm gonna give a salary and I'm predicting this guy is not gonna return me the 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 credit with this salary and this debt so I will not give him the the credit okay that's how how it works and to put an example or not supervised model imagine I have here a graphic of weight of people persons and the height so I can establish here some people with some height here and some weight okay and I'm gonna tell the model okay do do me a class and do me a classification of, of two groups okay I can tell the number of groups of these of these guys of these persons okay and the algorithm is gonna make uh, uh, these two groups and I can classify in this case these persons in this group with this height and this weight and this other group with this in this case because it's not supervised I'm not determining the the a variable a label I don't have a label but I want to classify I want to segment my in this case my the persons okay so you have an example um, as a summary okay as a summary uh, the traditional approach where it's not machine learning I have to code my intelligence I have to code the knowledge I have to be an expert in the business to be able to code that program I give new data and I get the results through machine learning I use a, a machine learning algorithm okay that I give past data past data is a good data I obtain a function or a model and then I'm gonna use that model to predict okay this is why we said that the ability of computers to learn without being programmed okay because in this case in this program I use an algorithm that is already done I can put it inside a Python program as I said but I, I don't need to code the intelligence as I have to code here okay so now after my explanation I hope the definition of machine learning as the ability of computers to learn without being explicit programmed is more clear. Thank you.